spicy decks of the week, where we look at all the cool, crazy decks this week that had success by either reaching King of Games, going on a win streak on ladder at the Legend or King of Games level, or by doing well in a tournament of some kind. Starting off, we have a defense OTK deck. Now, this one's uh, kind of special, right? So we're going to try to basically <laughs> OTK our opponent by making them attack into our face down monster and taking a bunch of damage. One of the best cards for this is Stone Statue of the Aztecs, which doubles any battle damage your opponent takes when they battle into it. And then we also have cards like Cross Counter, which uh, increase the defense of a defense position monster and uh, double the damage that your opponent takes from it. We also have things like D2 Shield to double our opponent's monster's defense, and that's literally our entire deck, right? We're just running a bunch of high defense monsters like Big Shield Gardna, the Destiny Hero Defender, and the new Power Pro Knight Sisters. Actually found the, someone actually found a way to use this card in a deck and make it viable. It has 2400 defense on a, four, uh, a level 4 body, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, but that's basically the point of this deck, is just to make our opponent try to OTK themselves by running into our defensive monsters. We do have some uh, kaiju monsters in here, kaiju and lava golem to try to get over problematic things as well as a, a small XYZ engine that we can go into eventually here. Uh, we don't special summon really with this deck so we have uh, plenty of room for pot of dualities in here. Just a really cool neat deck that someone managed to have success with on ladder. Definitely wanted to showcase it. It's kind of a, a bit different. So life point boost alpha is a skill. We have the one dogoran kaiju, one lava golem, two big shield gardena, three destiny hero defender, three stone statue of the aztecs, one power pro knight sisters, three pot of duality, 3d2 shield, 3 cross counter, and then in our extra deck we have the 1 Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon, 1 Cowboy, 1 Diamond Dyer, 1 Black Ship of Corn, 1 Super Quantal Mech Great Magnus, 1 number 27 Dead Knot, uh, Dreadnought, the 1 Pap or Photon Papal Operative, and then Nightmare Mermaid to get out of the Ibley Lock. Of course, I will link all these deck lists in the description. Um, if I do forget, just mention in the comments and I'll go ahead and do so afterwards. Next up, we have a mishmash of two different decks, and two of my favorite decks of all time, Adulteries and Ritual Beast, are two of the decks that I spent more time playing with in the TCG than almost any other deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! And to see them mixed together in a deck that's actually somewhat viable is pretty cool here. Uh, so the big things, if you've seen Madolce decks lately, uh, a lot of them are kind of just cutting down the five monsters and just going with back row and anti-back row to uh, basically go for the OTK and to stall out for their combos here. What we're taking the approach with this deck is instead of running back row cards to stall out our opponent, we're going to use the Ritual Beast engine instead. And of course, the Ritual Beast engine can be great for that as well. Uh, uh, Winda would be used traditionally in decks outside of Ritual Beast even, just because it can be a great stall card, right? Anytime she's destroyed, she brings in another Ritual Beast monster from your deck or extra deck, including these big powerful uh, fusion monsters. She can also get in into your other Ritual Beasts to further your combos by helping you get out Canahawk and starting to, to, to progress forward with that, so... It's really cool that we're just using the Ritual Beast engine to try to stall out here to, uh, in order to try to get our Madolce combos when we don't have it. Or we have our Madolce combos turn one, and if that doesn't get it done, then we can go into our Ritual Beast combos to try to win the long game. Because, of course, Ritual Beast can do really well in that sort of uh, longer environment when they're constantly uh, you know, generating tons of card advantage um, and doing all those things. So, just really neat to see these two put together. Our skill is going to be Sorcery Circuit. It's going to allow us to, it's kind of like a Destiny draw, but for Spellcasters when your life points go down by 1500. Um, actually, it's a random Spellcaster, you don't get a pick. It, but that's okay because we're only running one in here and that's Magellene and that's your best combo starter from Adult Age. You summon the Magellene, get the Petting Sessor and start your combos going with that. We also have the three Spiritual Beast uh, Winda, the one Pudding Sist, three Canahawk, three Magellene, one Petal Fin, two Elder as this card is still semi-limited to two after all this time, one Apelio, one Lara, we have one Dimensional Fissure, two MST, and one Ritual Beast Return. In the extra deck, only seven monsters listed here. We have one Apelio, one Canahawk, one Petal Fin, we have one Tiramisu, one Pudding Sis Chocolate Isle Mode, and then two Glass, or two glass Souffle rounding out the last of this list. Next up, we have a dual avatar deck. Now, this is actually one of the newer archetypes that came out of the Raider Requiem's box that was released recently. And I haven't seen too many people using this deck and having too many success with it. So I am glad to see when it does come up like this. Um, this deck has a lot of really cool searchers and consistency to it that's going to allow them to go into their fusion monsters very easily by creating tokens and giving them extra material so you're not losing out too much on card advantage that way. Um, uh, uh, one of their monsters, the level 4 Yuhi here, uh, is going to allow them to search for spell cards. It also recurs itself whenever your fusion monsters in the field are destroyed and sent to the grave. You get to add it back to your hand and reuse it, reuse its effect. So really cool um, that this deck has like so many ways for you to like just recoup advantages by summoning so many tokens out and doing things like that. Coco Co is going to let you um, search out trap cards from your deck. Also give you another way to fusion summon 
uh, uh, dual avatar monsters. And we have a searcher for your main deck, dual avatars with the perfect synced Aeon's field spell. It's going to let you search for a dual avatar monster from your deck uh, when you first activate it. Also going to allow you to summon uh, uh, some of those dual avatar spirit tokens I mentioned earlier, giving you material for your fusion summons. We also have dual avatar invitation, which is going to let you special summon more spirit tokens and allow you to fusion summon twice in a turn with this card. So plenty of abilities or plenty of ways to fuse with monsters, especially when considering that the Kaiki, the Unity Star, also does that. We're not using the two level fives together. We do have Idoten in here in the extra deck uh, for you know the potential 3,000 damage it can do, and it's a very difficult card to remove. So that's there. But the main thing we like about this is that it does allow you to fusion summon with monsters on the board and hand. It's a walking polymerization. Um, uh, this level five monster is so pretty cool. And of course they're all warriors, so you can search them out, reinforce them in the army. If you want to use Expendable Die, that's an option too. We're not using it in this specific deck, but Expendable die is an option here as well we also have uh, a, a ton of other cards we got a, a dual avatar of feeding evil this is basically like a gemini spark for the deck you target a, a dual avatar you control a card your opponent controls blow them up and then you get a draw card if you blew up a fusion monster or you can banish card from your opponent's graveyard so it's kind of like a dd crow if you want instead and then dual avatar return is kind of like a call of the haunted but you get a token with it too so again just tons of ways that this deck is able to get you free uh, fusion material for it of course we also have powerful fusion monsters in here as well empowered kun gyo um, gives you a way Ways to negate your opponent's uh, effects when they target your monsters to protect them. We also have uh, armored Ungyo, um, just tons of tons of powerful uh, fusion monsters in our deck. They have some protection effects as well. Ungyo is going to let you like destroy a, a, another monster, protect your fusion monsters on the field. So lots of ways to pump these things out and, and swing over opponents' board. Field of the War is also going to help with that as well, giving us Sogan as our um, as a field spell automatically activated for the attack boost. So in the deck list, real fast, we have two of the Kaiki, three of the Yuhi. Three of the Kokoku, two Aeon, one Rota, one Forbidden Lance, three of the Dual Avatar Invitation, one Fusion Substitute, two, du two Dual av Avatar <laughs> Defeating Evil, two Dual Avatar Return, we have one Idoten, one Empowered Kungyo, two Armored Ungyo, and then three of the Armored Agyo, and then one Link Disciple to get out of the Ibli Lock. And then last up, we have a Red Eyes deck. Now, the reason I wanted to showcase this is because we got another card fairly recently as well in Borlode Furious Dragon. Now, this is obviously a card that you would think of more to be used in Rockets, since you require two Dark Dragons to make it, but obviously Red Eyes has quite a few Dark Dragons in the deck that we have access to that allow us to go into this as well. So it's just really neat that we uh, have you know, another way to utilize this card outside of just the rocket archetype. Our main way to go into it is gonna be the Necrofusion, allowing us to just banish two darks from our graveyard to go into it fairly easily. It's just a neat addition to a, to, to a deck that already had a lot of really cool plays going for it. Red Eyes is one of those decks that, you know, you just see it pop up here and here with tops every now and again, or which this deck did. It's a, I don't even know what kind of tournament it was. Bubble Box release, something I have to look into more, but. Did really well in this one, and you, you see this from time to time. Red Eyes is still a viable deck, definitely King of Games worthy. Um, so we'll go ahead and go through the deck list. Red Eyes Roulette is our skill, of course, the main skill you see used with Red Eyes nowadays, giving you that consistency for whatever you need for your fusion summons. We have the one Gear Freed, one DD Crow, one Mana Dragon Zernatron. Remember, this is a Dark Dragon, so it does also count for our Borload Furious Dragon. We have two Red Eyes Baby Dragon, two Red Eyes Black Dragon, one MST, three Red Eyes Fusion, three Red Eyes Insight. Two World Legacy Clash. Interesting. Haven't seen this card used in a while. Kind of forgot, forgot uh, this card was uh, around. And it's off the ban list now, I do, if I'm not mistaken. So interesting to see this one being used. We have two Ice Dragons Prisons and one Crackdowns, uh, rounding out our limit threes. Two Red Eyes Fang with Chain. Two Necro Fusion. And then in our extra deck, we have the one Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. Two Borlord Furious Dragon. One Meteor Black Comet Dragon. One Dark Arm, the Dragon of Annihilation. One Volo Ferengis, the one that pops monster and opponent side of the board. One Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, and then the one of Link Disciple, again, to get out of that super annoying Ibli luck. Guys, that's it for the decks for this week's Spicy Decks. If you guys liked the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel, and I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys for watching, and have a wonderful rest of the day.